Good morning, everybody. Let's just wait a few more minutes for all of the attendees to roll on in. We'll start about 12.01. Okay, it is now 12 noon. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our speaker today, uh, which is me. I'm Michael McClellan. I'm one of the partners here at L3 Levine Electronics and Electrics. Either by accident or by design, you have come to a L3 COVID-19 lunchtime webinar. Appreciate everybody who has attended these in the past and hope you guys have got something out of them. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Hopefully you can see my screen. Hopefully you see a red Dan Foss banner across the top. If you can't, please chime into the question box or the chat box and let us know. I also have Tim Park with me from Danfoss to help with any uh, difficult questions you get you guys may come up with during the webinar. And most of our webinars great. have been technical in nature. Um, this one will also be technical, but it'll probably be one of the more commercial presentations that we give just because I am trying to give you guys as many options as possible in the NEMA 4X drive category. So um, the housekeeping items, uh, your phones are muted. However, we would love to interact with you. We would love to answer your questions. So if you can use the question box on the right side of the screen, and press that button and type in your question, then Tim and I will attempt to answer it as best we can. We're gonna jump around a little bit and have, uh, part of this will be a PowerPoint presentation and there'll be some videos in between and hopefully some questions. So here we go. So, why are we having this conversation? There are lots of reasons to consider putting drives outside, outdoors. Perhaps you have a small lift station or a booster station. It costs money to build these buildings to house drives and disconnects and cam locks, pin and sleeve connectors, that kind of thing. But sometimes if a pump station or a lift station is fairly small, then uh, the entire uh, electrical system can be mounted on a back, you know, a back plane or unistrut and a lot of money can be saved. You may have a situation where there's no more room in your electrical room where you have run out of space. And this is a, in this case, it's a good idea to consider the outside of the building. You may be designing a new facility, a new room, um, and you want to reduce the amount of HVAC load in that building. And 
this is a good way to do it. This is, you know, to put the drives outdoors uh, reduces all that need for cooling that falls on the building HVAC system. And it, it, it used to be, you know, I, I know what you know, some of you may be thinking. It used to be that drives were fragile devices filled with electronics that needed cool, um, dry air um, and needed a lot of it to uh, expel the heat. And uh, that is not the case anymore. Um, drives have become fairly uh, hardy devices, depending on um, you know how they're built and what their uh, nominal and max temperature ratings are. But the printed circuit boards have become more robust, especially when uh, applied with coatings that make them uh, what we call 3C3 certified. <clears throat> and um, the power transistors have also evolved into more robust devices. Uh, you may consider putting drives outdoors because there are some benefits to having the drive uh, and perhaps the motor disconnect uh, right there at the drive. Um, we have encountered a few customers who uh, through um, some re-engineering have been able to eliminate their entire panel and simply use the integral disconnect or integral fused disconnect of the Danfoss drives in place of uh, the breaker that would have been in the in the panel. There's a lot of cost savings to be had here. And finally, at uh, several facilities, I can think of a sawmill uh, right now. Um, I can think of um, a, uh, a chemical plant right now in, in, in south, southeast Georgia uh, where these drives are used indoors. These, these NEMA 4X drives are being used uh, inside the plant just because the environment is, is very harsh. There's, it's a, a dusty, nasty uh, chemical environment in which uh, things build up on enclosures and it's a good application for a NEMA 4X drive. So here we go. Let's review uh, for a second what NEMA 4X means. And uh, NEMA 4X is equivalent to, well, for the purposes of this discussion, we're gonna say NEMA 4X is equivalent to IP66. So of course, NEMA is um, you know, the National Electrical Manufacturers Association and uh, IP, um, I, I can't recall what that stands for right now, but this is more of a European or international uh, protection standard. And so uh, the six in the first number means the enclosure totally protects the device from dust. And the second digit being a six is signifies that the device is protected against strong jets of water in, in all different directions, actually, and, the, and that very limited ingress is permitted and the, the electrical piece of equipment has to remain functional. Here it is broken out a different way. Um, we see NEMA 4X uh, is equivalent to IP66. And additionally, uh, this document tells us that um, the enclosure must be protected against uh, strong jets of water from all directions, up, down, from the sides, uh, from the bottom, and from the back. And additionally, that it is protected against corrosion, and that can be accomplished uh, a few different ways. Uh, you can build the entire uh, equipment out of stainless steel, or you can engineer the equipment with uh, non-corrosive material like a, a thermoset resin uh, or epoxy resin. Um, and the, the marketing folks at Danfoss won't let us use the term plastic. So uh, <laughs> we can't say plastic. Let's define a, an additional term. 
<clears throat> Michael, composite yeah. works though. <laughs> composite. Great. That's it's a great word, Tim. Yeah. Let's go with composite. Uh, today, so that our discussion um, there's no confusion, let's uh, let's define an additional additional term for our our discussion, and that is native NEMA 4x. And by native NEMA 4x, what I mean is that the manufacturer has constructed, tested, designed the drive uh, to be NEMA 4x when it leaves our assembly line. Um, without having to go to a third party manufacturer like an enclosure vendor or panel builder to have a NEMA 4X enclosure put around it. So we're gonna use the term native NEMA 4X when, when referring to that. We can send a drive of any size and any drive to a panel shop to be put in a NEMA 4X enclosure. <clears throat> but it's time consuming, expensive. There's custom design work to be done. The solutions that I'm charged with sharing with you today are native NEMA 4X. They roll off of our assembly line with a NEMA 4X sticker certifying that they've been tested either at the NEMA facility or a, uh, another facility that's certified to test these and they have passed the tests required for NEMA 4X. There are three terms I'm going to use today uh, when describing these drives, and I think it's important just to spend 30 seconds on where, where these drives came from. Uh, TB Woods um, designed a, a fantastic drive um, and sold millions of them um, for, for many years. Uh, that drive is still in existence today. We call it the X4. When it had a TB Woods label on it, it was called the E-Track. And uh, we are lucky enough to actually today have Tim Park, um, who was with the original TB Woods company. Uh, so Tim, Tim has survived two acquisitions. He survived the acquisition of TB Woods by Vacon, and he has also survived the Danfoss acquisition of Vacon. So if you need a lesson in corporate politics, uh, Tim is your man. In case you guys want to read more about the these acquisitions, um, of course the TB Woods acquisition was in 2007. Uh, they paid around 29 million dollars for that uh, business unit and then uh, a very large purchase occurred in 2014 bleeding over into 2015. In which Dan Foss paid 1.3 billion for Vaca. So all that's under one company, one leadership now. Micro drives, uh, let's, let's define a micro drive. Um, usually it's a drive, um, I would say inexpensive, um, maybe under 10 horsepower. Um, so let's, let's look at a solution we have for micro drive, a NEMA 4X micro drive. Enter the Vacon 20X. Uh, this drive was built from the ground up to be a NEMA 4X drive. It is a very full featured drive, especially for a micro drive. Uh, it caps out at about 10 horsepower for uh, three phase. It will convert single phase to three phase power up to 1.5 horsepower. There are some uh, really uh, nifty features about this drive. Uh, gonna, that's a technical term, nifty. Um, the keypad uh, can be removable as an option. It can also be mounted in any uh, position. Um, the keypad uh, can simply be turned 90 degrees. So as I understand it, this drive can be mounted right side up, horizontally, upside down, Apparently it's been tested in all those positions and the heat will be removed sufficiently. The Vacon 20X <laughs> conforms to a standard uh, called IEC 61131, which is a PLC programming standard. So if you have um, built a PLC program uh, in another piece of software, 
uh, that is conforms to IEC 611.31-1, uh, then you will be able to download it directly into the uh, BACON uh, 20X. All right, now we are going to test the limits of my GoToWebinar knowledge, and we are going to try to look at a video of BACON 20X. Congratulations, Michael. It actually worked with sound. <laughs> Thanks, John. So uh, hopefully you saw from that video, there, there's a, no, a lot of nice features in that drive. And um, you may have noticed that uh, that drive can include an integral disconnect. Um, so how nice to have a, if you have a drive right with your motor, to have your at motor disconnect. Uh, right there inside of the drive, and uh, that dis that disconnect is padlockable as well. <laughs> Next in the lineup is going to be the Vacon 100X. Um, this is more of a general purpose drive. It is not a micro drive. Um, this drive, with all of the drives we're going to review today, this is probably going to be the most expensive drive that we have. That is a NEMA 4X drive. Um, it's a uh, highly engineered, uh, highly tested, uh, and, and built for uh, high vibration applications as well. Um, and it has a lot of the flexible features like the, the 20X. Um, this drive uh, goes up to 50 horsepower uh, in a NEMA 4X uh, form factor. And you can see if you uh, look here to the at the picture on the right side, you'll see the integral disconnect on this uh, device as well. And we're going to watch another short video.
So I think that gives you an idea of what the Vacon 100X is about. If you uh, were watching the video, you may have seen that the Vacon 100X, uh, like all of its Vacon 100 counterparts, includes uh, dry film type capacitors. And uh, those capacitors have some properties uh, that make them in, in some ways superior to electrolytic capacitors. Um, one of the nice things about dry film capacitors is that they do not need to be reformed. Um, electrolytic capacitors, if um, like if you left a drive on the shelf for two years uh, that had electrolytic capacitors, we would certainly suggest that you reform those capacitors, uh, that you take that drive through the reforming process, um, which is not complicated, but uh, the capacitors need to be reformed before that drive goes into service. Uh, that is not the case with the dry film capacitors. Okay, so we're moving into the Danfoss uh, side of the product line. <clears throat> the FC301 is a general purpose drive of uh, variable torque, and uh, we also have the ability to make it in a native NEMA 4X uh, form factor. Uh, I believe this is up to uh, 125 horsepower, perhaps. Uh, Tim. Do you have that information? Hundred. This is 100, 100 horsepower on the slide. Say right. that again. The slide says 100 horsepower. Okay, great. Yeah, 100 horsepower for uh, constant torque. Okay. And so this is the drive that um, TB Woods designed and manufactured uh, starting, I believe, 25. It might, might be 25, might be 30 years ago. Um, this drive has a absolutely enormous installed base, um, especially in the food industry. Um, I can think of 20 plants off the top of my head, just in Georgia, that have these drives um, out on the uh, production floor. Um, this drive, uh, like, like the Vacon 20X and 100X, was created with uh, NEMA 4X in mind. It, it, there is no NEMA 1 version of this drive. There is no NEMA 12 version. Uh, this is a drive that was meant to be NEMA 4X when it was conceived. <clears throat> um, this drive hasn't changed much in the last 25 or 30 years. I'm sure some of the software has been updated, probably some of the electronic components, but overall it really hasn't changed much. Um, this is not the drive for the person who wants to <sighs> make fancy settings changes via their laptop. Um, it is a drive that is really suited for um, controlling it from the front of the drive. Uh, it's a simple, simple interface uh, with few parameters compared to some of our other offerings and <clears throat> it just works. It has a high temperature rating, uh, as well as it has some built-in uh, resistance uh, for breaking uh, a motor. So uh, it, the drive is just a tank. Um, I can't say enough good things about uh, this drive, and I think Bacon got a hell of a bargain at $29 million. Um, one thing to note is that... Can I jump in here for just a quick second? Yeah, please do. Uh, uh, when you speak of this thing having some age to it, you're really dealing with a couple different generations of product. Um, it, the predecessor to the X4 was a product called WFC. 
that goes back to the to 1990. Um, so that's 30 years old. Uh, WX4 is the second generation of that that very successful niche product um, that originates in about 2004. So uh, it's uh, this product is about 16 years old. Um, it's it's kind of right in line with most of the Danfoss portfolio in terms of age. But we, the, the Woods uh, market plan was uh, one of, you know, we'll give, we'll give you uh, a NEMA 4 product uh, with, uh, you know, some serial communication capability, uh, a highly capable um, keypad, and, uh, uh, you know, you should be able to do most anything you want with it. I mean, that was the idea behind it. Um, we used to joke that many of our customers' name was Bubba um, because it was easy to spec and easy to use. So um, I'm done. Absolutely. Thank you, Tim. Um, and that being said, there is a way to connect the laptop to the uh, the X4 and X5 and um, there's even a uh, what we call a synchronizer built into the drive, so uh, you can do some. Uh, uh, excuse me, a sequencer. You can do some some fancy things uh, with with this drive. The X5 is just a version of the X4 that has the capability to. Uh, accept option cards um, that will enable it to, you know, talk Ethernet IP, a PROFINET, that kind of thing, and give um, expanded uh, digital I.O. Uh, and uh, there's also, I believe, an analog uh, input option. The SC302 is Dan Foss's uh, flagship drive. It's the industrial constant torque drive, and uh, it is available in a native NEMA 4X form factor, uh, up to around, uh, I think, 100 or 125 horsepower. Anything above that <clears throat> would have to go to a, a third-party manufacturer. But this drive is also available with an integral fuse and disconnect. And here is a picture of one I just happen to have on my desk here. <clears throat> um, actually, this is an FC202, but it's built on the same platform as the 302. So you'll see on the picture to the left, you'll see the disconnect handle. It's all part of the drive. This all comes from Dan Foss uh, as an assembly uh, that's been you know, fully tested. And uh, on the picture to the right, you'll see the fuses. So, you know, here, here we have an integral disconnect and fuses. And why, you know, why is this important? You know, drives, when they go to be tested at laboratories like Kima and other laboratories, uh, they're tested with fuses. So the, the UL listing, that is achieved by Dan Foss and, and certified is good when fuses when, when fuses are protecting the drive, um, and I believe that's that's the case across almost all manufacturers. We have some solutions that are specific to ap certain applications. The FC two hundred two is a uh, water drive or what we call the aqua drive it has all the macros and and uh, fancy software built into it uh, and uh, scaling software to uh, to use terms and parameters that are in things like gallons per hour or uh, pascals or psi um, it's set up uh, specifically for uh, pump applications. It's a variable torque drive and it is available 
in the NEMA 4X, native NEMA 4X form, form factor. And we're gonna watch a short video that uh, illustrates a uh, fun little demo that uh, Dan Foss did at a trade show in 2014. So that's for the folks that uh, don't believe the drive is, is waterproof. Here are some pictures of some installations. <clears throat> this happens to be an FC202 uh, with, a, with a bypass panel next to it. And you can see it's mounted right here out in the open. Um, that, that looks like a sales rep standing next to it with a with a notebook but uh and you can see that uh this includes a um a sun shield right there on the top of the drive and um which also has the same um uh, effect of uh, keeping water from uh, running directly onto the drive but but it's not needed to keep the water ingress out that happens to be in el paso texas where it's usually a nice warm day yeah so that's that's joe halliday and joe is our um oh geez national director of marketing for the water segment is that right business development yeah. okay here's a better picture and you can see the uh, flex uh, conduit uh, running from the drive to the the bypass. And, um, you know, this is uh, this was a very very economical installation for the end user. There was no equipment room to be built. Uh, it was simple as uh, you know a lot of lots of Unistrut, but Unistrut is a lot cheaper than building walls. Um, so. Unistrut and a wire way, and uh, off we go, and the customer is is up and running. And so a lot of you are going to say, "I'm not putting a drive out in the public area where someone can mess with the keypad." And um, it's a it's a semi valid concern. You know, you you can uh, password protect the drive. Um, so that no one can can change the parameters. But in case that's not enough, Dan Foss offers a um, keypad. It's a, a what we call a blind cover. And so the keypad that is normally on the drive would actually come off. And this would go in its place. And the drive would continue to run whatever program is, is in the drive. And this is going to uh, discourage uh, a lot of vandals or uh, thieves. Um, you know, if they don't see an electronic screen and a keypad, a lot of times that they will move on. We offer as a factory accessory this uh, sun shield. 
and it's uh, it has its own catalog number and it's available to order with the drive. You're also welcome to fabricate uh, your own, uh, but uh, the drive is rated certified NEMA 4X, um, but, but you will, there are lots of benefits to keeping sun off of the drive. Um, and the keypad, I guess in my experience, the first thing to go is the keypad or the screen. Those are gonna go, if exposed to direct sunlight all day, every day, those are gonna go way before any of the power components. You may want to uh, have ethernet conduct, uh, connectivity uh, either permanently or temporarily. Um, we offer a watertight USB plug to um, set up, help set up the drive. In the pictures I showed you, the drive was mounted to a uh, like a back panel or a back plane. So this particular accessory was not necessary, <clears throat> but there's uh, a effect that our um, mechanical engineers call the chimney effect. Um, and that uh, makes sure that the hot air continues to uh, rise from the, the radiator fins and pull in that cold air. And you need a, a sort of an enclosed uh, tube, if you will, to take advantage of that particular phenomenon. And uh, that that will not occur if the uh, fins are just sitting out in open air. So if you if you do uh, use this NEMA 4X form factor to your advantage and simply mount the drive on a piece of Unistrut, you really need to uh, install this uh, stainless steel backplate to uh, gain all the benefits of the chimney effect. Here's another happy customer who uh, used the NEMA 4X drive to their advantage. Uh, this, these folks are up in New Jersey. And uh, the drive is mounted, I've, I've, it's sort of hard to see in the photo, but I've drawn a red arrow. The drive is, is mounted right there at the motor, um, right there in, in uh, above the mixer. Uh, so um, fairly harsh you know, environment. Um, and it does have a sun shield. Looks like that one was custom fabricated uh, to keep the sun off of it. And I believe uh, they bought 17 more of these drives to make it a total of 18 and uh, are very happy. Joe, do you want to say anything else about that installation? Yeah, this one, this is a kind of a pet project of mine. We fed a bank of eight drives through a panel. There was a very small house, um, electrical house that had a, uh, I think it was an MCC system in it with uh, some circuit breakers, but no place to install the drives. It's a perfect example of NEMA 4X capability installing the drive right in the field at the motor. Um, and in this one, we included a 400 amp active harmonic filter at the panel in the little house. Uh, to mitigate all the harmonics off eight drives. So there's two sets of those, and that was 18 total. And that was part one of the project. And part two, I believe, is going to happen late this year or early next year, just duplicating with 18 more. So worked out really successfully. That's great, Joe. Thank you. Here's another picture of a NEMA 4X drive. And... Um, one of the reasons we're able to put these drives outside is they they do have an extended temperature range. They they're made to function at 50 degrees C instead of the standard uh, that most drive manufacturers build to, which is 40 degrees C. I believe this was a custom fabricated sun shield, and um, I like this. Spears, if you will, on the front of it to keep the birds off of it. So, Dan Foss goes beyond NEMA 4X. Hey, Mike, Michael, just let me yes, throw sir. one thing in there yet about the 100X that makes it kind of unique, and that is it it comes with a 
uh, a separately powered heating element that can allow it to be applied not to, to a bit below minus 25, the whole way down to minus 40 C. Uh, not that you ever see that in Georgia, but uh, it's there if you send it north. No, no, it's, um, we don't see that in Georgia. Um, so uh, thank you for that, Tim. So so what you're saying is, if I could confirm, you're, you're saying that the 100X has a separately powered heating element, and then that's uh, one of the things that helps it get to its extended temperature range of negative 40 degrees C. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. Okay, great. So Dan Foss has gone beyond NEMA 4X uh, for a few uh, niche applications. They've taken the engineering expertise they've learned from creating and improving the X4 and X5 to build what we call the HASLOW. <clears throat> and um, obviously that drive is for hazardous locations. Uh, is certified to be placed in class one div two environments uh, and the four groups a b c and d and we're going to review what those mean <clears throat> this drive is available up to 75 horsepower at three phase and it starts out at about 30 um, but we see people purchasing it with uh, uh, smaller applications um, this tim this drive could be used what down to about 10 horsepower is that correct? Uh, 10 is 10 is the the low end of the spectrum and you know comparing it against some solutions out there it still uh can be an economic favorite at, at 10 horsepower <clears throat> yeah so if you have to uh if you have a 10 horsepower motor and you know your choices are uh you know to purchase the 10 horsepower NEMA one drive and uh, you know go find a cast aluminum enclosure um, and then design around that or you could uh, use this device which even though it's rated for 30 horsepower it will work in applications down to uh, 10 horsepower and I think if you compare pricing of the 30 horsepower drive against the uh, 10 horsepower with a cast aluminum enclosure, I think you'll find that uh, we, we, we are gonna be very competitive in that situation. The drive is available <coughs> with uh, this yellow front, which is mild steel, and it's available with uh, in stainless steel as well. And here's a review of class one div two. Uh, I believe the, the class, Div 2 is the less stringent uh, of the two. Uh, so if you're certified for class one Div 2, you cannot necessarily use that in a class one Div 1 location. The four groups are reviewed uh, in the picture to the right. So we have the acetylene is group A, um, hydrogen is group B and, and it's uh, derivatives. Um, group C is um, ethylene and group D is going to be your propane and its derivatives. There are some drives that uh, are specific really for the food and beverage or, or conveyor market uh, that Dan Foss has engineered. <clears throat> um, this is a drive the FCD 302 is meant to uh, be placed out on the factory floor and it uh, should go you know, right right there with the motor. It's available with uh, a, a hygienic certification called EHEDG. And uh, please contact us if you'd like more information regarding that certification. And again, this is a NEMA 4X product. The one gear uh, drive is a uh, motor and gearbox um, in one uh, also um, for can can be used in these hygienic applications and 
um, this this is a uh, drive that was conceived uh, to uh, absolutely maximize the efficiency of the uh, system and it's an entire presentation um, to describe uh, how uh, overall system efficiency is calculated uh, and we could do that another day but um, for today's purposes I just want you guys to be aware that uh, this is another NEMA 4X solution and it's actually it's one step beyond NEMA 4X um, you've got some new terms up here to the right that you know let's review in, in the next slide um, we these are these are not IP66 these are actually IP67 and a um, form factor is available known as IP69K. So let's take a look. What what is IP67? Well, IP67, the second number being a seven instead of a six, stipulates that we are not only protected against strong jets of water, but we are perfected protected against temporary immersion between 15 centimeters and one meter. So now we have to be able to submerse the unit. Taken one step further, IP69K is even more stringent than IP67. And here's where the international protection standard is gonna stipulate the pressure and the temperature of the water that is uh, being um, squirted for a better for lack of a better term onto the drive uh, the pressure uh, they define is eight uh, to ten uh, mega pascals and um, if you go back to the NEMA 4x um, standard you'll find that um, the standard is a hundred kilopascals so 100 kilopascals versus 8 to 10 megapascals that is uh, 100 times more pressure uh, in addition the water has to be 80 degrees c uh, which is 160 160 uh, 176 degrees fahrenheit so, so let's sum it all up into one slide The Vacon 20X uh, goes to 105, uh, excuse me, 1.5 horsepower, a single phase conversion, and it will go to 10 horsepower given three phase input. Yes, it is capable of the three, the single phase to three phase conversion, and it does offer a integrated disconnect option. It does not have an integrated fuse option. And yes, it can be mounted upside down, horizontal, or in any configuration. Great for the panel builder who has no space in the panel and needs to mount it horizontal or in another configuration. The Vacon 100X, its big brother, uh, goes to 50 horsepower, three phase. It is not a single phase input drive. It does have an option for the integral disconnect. And I believe in that video, I saw that that disconnect can be mounted on the right or left side. Is that correct, Tim? On the 100X, that's correct. Yeah, so we got some additional flexibility there. It does not have an option to have integrated integral fuses. Uh, the old standby, the uh, the workhorse, um, the 30-year heritage drive, the Vacon X4 and X5, does have a single phase conversion option, and that will go to 10 horsepower. Uh, at three phase, uh, we are looking at a 100 horsepower maximum, uh, and that is at that is in order to continue with the NEMA 4X enclosure that drive will go to 150 horsepower but above 100 horsepower it is NEMA 3R it is native NEMA 3R unfortunately with the X4 there are no integrated fuse or disconnect options and I don't believe that the X4 has been tested to be mounted upside down or horizontal the 301 
Um, it, yeah, it has not. It has not. Okay. The SC 301 and 302 um, are uh, also they're three phase drives. They're not going to have a single. Not, they're not going to have a UL listed single phase conversion option. <clears throat> However, they do have options to have the fuse and um, fused disconnect. And finally, the SC202 is the drive that Dan Foss um, did design in mind or has an option for uh, the single phase uh, conversion. And that drive will run a 50 horsepower motor uh, with, a, with a single leg, a single phase leg of 480. Okay, Michael. Yes, sir. Uh, there's an update we really haven't published, um, so you wouldn't know about it, but we can offer single phase FC202 up to 215 horsepower today. That's 480 volt. So if you run into any of those larger horsepower single phase applications, we got you covered. Wow, that's wonderful. That's going to make a lot of farmers uh, or irrigation guys uh, very happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why we really haven't, you know, blasted that information out there, but it is available. And if you look in IPC, when you're looking at quoting, you get a selection of 215 horsepower single phase. Wow. A lot of good secrets at Dan Fox. <laughs> um. So to sum up, the FC202, uh, yes, goes to 125 horsepower at three phase. Um, and this is a NEMA 4X option. Now, Joe, uh, can you still get the, can you get that 215 horsepower drive in a NEMA 4X form factor? No, that would that would be NEMA 12 only. I mean, you might be able to do NEMA 3R um, at 215 horsepower. That's a good question, but the, the limitation on the NEMA 4X is the actual enclosure that takes us to 125 horsepower variable torque. Yes, yes, fantastic. So, conclusion, um, you know, Dan Foss can, uh, there's a drive for every application. Uh, I don't think there's an application that Dan Foss has backed down from So we are happy to help uh, in any way. And, and you know, the, the main conclusion here is you don't have to put the drives in the electrical room. If there's one thing I want you guys to leave with today, it is that you don't have to put the drives in the electrical room. That is all I have. Uh, we, have um, we have one or two questions here. This question refers to, uh, is this a consumable or modular drive? Can the power I think, I, I, think I answered an answer to every one of them, Michael. It, it was just to, to the individual. Okay, okay, wonderful. Well, um, we do have a poll question here, really quick. I've got to jump off on another matter, Michael. Thank you very much. Good job. And um, I will touch bases with you again real soon. Thanks again, Tim. So there is a poll question up in case you guys didn't see it. Here's a question that just came in. Can the pump, can the drives do PID control for a pump pressure control? Um, I, 
I'm going to say all of those drives that we mentioned, except for the 301, I believe. We'll do the closed loop control. Uh, if you specifically wanted uh, pump pressure, the easiest drive for you to set up would be the SC202 because it is going to have that software built into it. But all of the drives that we cover today, I believe, will do that. That's correct. There's also, Michael, an auto tuning feature, which is really cool. Um, Danfoss has a 25 minute video just on how to set up PID loops with the 202. So if anybody has any wants to see that video, let Michael or me know and we can get you to that to see it. it it's absolutely fantastic video. They even have a function called um, scope where you can actually see in real time how the values change and how the PID loop controls to get it back in sync. So, um, very nice feature. Michael, you still there? I'm still here. I'm going to close this poll and have one more poll question. Um, and so we have one more poll question for you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hey, that wasn't the right question. <laughs> <laughs> Hope uh, you will join us again for we have two more webinars uh, this week and hope you guys will join us with some more questions. You've actually got a third poll question, Michael, too. And here's our final poll question. If any of you would like to be contacted and have an in-depth and hopefully in-person discussion uh, regarding a drive application, please um, click yes and someone will be in contact with you shortly. And thank you again for your time today.